So just a real quick rundown uh, for those who are trying to get into Pinewood Derby, whether it's in the scouting BSA program or I've heard that the Girl Scouts are also getting the girls involved in Pinewood Derby. Uh, just some quick tips and tricks that me and my son learned throughout the years to make a, a quick car. So the car you're looking at right now is Dylan's flash car that he raced as a Weeblo. And it took first place in his den out of about 12 to 14 boys. Took first place overall at the pack level out of about 60 boys. And then we went to the district races for Princess Anne. And it took third place at districts for Weeblos. And then it took third place overall out of all the scouts at districts. And then he missed third place at council level um, by a couple hundredths of a second. So this is a, a pretty quick car. And then for him making it to the council level qualified him for Worlds in New York City, but due to scheduling conflicts, we, we couldn't make it. So again, this is just some, some real basic stuff that we learned here. So you can kind of see the, the profile of the car, the front lip, we kind of, kind of beveled down a little bit. Just real basic. We moved the, the front wheels as far forward as we could get and you want to leave a little bit of wood sticking out of the front so that way when it hits the end of the track it doesn't mess up your wheels and your axles. Uh, he wanted the, the kind of more sleek bubble kind of came straight back and then you can see on the back end we beveled it for aerodynamics a little bit um, and kept the, the wheels a little bit forward. So for weight distribution and placement what he ended up doing was I had him on the drill press and he used a drill bit and he honed out a lot of the weight from the center of the car um, so that way you can put most of your weight towards the back end. You want to leave a little bit of weight up on the front end um, so that way as it comes down the track and it comes down off of the apex before it flattens out you don't want your car to pop a wheelie or lose traction on the front because then it will wiggle side to side and slow down. So weight placement is everything in his key. So what we ended up doing was I cast bullets. So these are actually 45 caliber bullets that we drilled in and placed just in front of the rear axle. Um, great thing about it is you can kind of cut them down or drill them out to get your weight as close to the the maximum weight that you can. Um, and the amount of wood that we took out of the top right here is pretty substantial. I'd say there's less than a quarter inch of wood. Probably you see the thickness here on the side. We were able to get that thickness up here on the the top as well. Um, other than that we used a axle polishing kit. You chuck the axles up in a drill press um, and then you step down with some kind of rougher grit sandpaper and then go down to super fine and then ended up using some honing polish compound that you can buy at the, the hardware stores um, and got the the axles almost to a mirror finish. The next thing that you want to look at is the inside the head of the axle right here. When it comes out of the mold, you'll get some burrs on there. So you really want to take a file and knock those burrs off. Um, after that, what we did was we took a Q-tip with some graphite on it and you stick it inside the wheel hub and you just spin the q-tip you take the cotton off so you're just using the q-tip um the cotton rod of the q-tip and you just polish the inside and you really impregnate it with the the graphite and you can see that there's graphite all over the car graphite is is key um but other than that, this the spoiler is made out of lead. He wanted it for aesthetics, for appearances, to make it look cool, and we matched it. The lightning bolts were all hand hand drawn, hand painted. Um, so yeah, your your top things that you really want to be looking at is your wheel placement. You want a long wheelbase, front wheels as far forward as you can get them, back wheels kind of as far back as you can get them. Uh, next is waist plate weight placement. So you want your weight forward of the rear axle. You don't want a lot of weight back here on the back end, again because you don't want to pop wheelies, but you want most of your weight just forward 
of your rear axle and you don't want any dead weight. So that's why we honed this out. So the more weight you can put back here, the better. And the other thing that we learned was having the weight lower on the car is better than having it on the top of the car. Now I know some of the lower profile cars like these, you'll see real thin wood and the weight stacked up on top of it. But this one you can see, these are actually bullet weights that we put in. You can see the holes here out of the top. That was actually where the, the drill went in. So to make the weight on this car, I had to actually chop off um, the lead bullets to get it. But you can see even this one, I honed out the inside to lessen the weight on the front. This was my car from the adult um, division last year. This was Pam's car from two years ago. Same, same thing. Honed it out, weights to the back end. This car actually took third out of the adult division. And this was Lily's car from last year from the kids' open division. And she got third overall behind me. And a lot of the, a lot of the same thing. She got first out of the kids, but out of the entire division, um, she got third. And we had to take some of the weights out to, to make the weight correctly. You can see we honed out the front. So she did a really good job on that one. So as I show you here, on these cars, how you can actually see the the weight distribution as I hold my finger, that's about the middle weight distribution of that car. So most of the weight is probably on the, the back quarter of this car. And then the same thing on this one, if you balance it, it's really, this one's a little bit trickier. So this one, the weight distribution is really right, right in front of that back axle, kind of right, right in that area. So this is the center of your car. Most of the weight is on this back end, and the front end is quite a bit lighter. Like I said, that is, that is the fastest car that Dylan was able to design and and create. And we didn't do any of the the wheel tricks where you get a bent axle so it it's called the rail rider um, so you can see all four wheels make contact for the most part this one's up just a little bit it might just be due to the the wheel diameter um, well that's really about it um, so with creating the car like I said you'll get the wooden block and when you get the wooden block, it'll have the axle channels cut into it. Don't use those. So what we do is, that's the top part of the car, and we cut those axle channels off. So as you see on the bottom, there's no channels. So what we do is we take the axle guide here, this little jig, and you stick it on the bottom of the car. And you got to be careful because sometimes the paint or the, the width of the car, you may have to sand it down. And this slides over, and that one's a, a bad one, maybe Lily's will, will show us. Yep, so you just slide it over all the way down. I'd push it on, but her paint, and you see it's digging in. I don't want to rip the, the paint off of her car. So you just slide that in, and it sits flush on the bottom of it. So once your car is set in there, you can put a little tiny set screw if you want to put one in there so it doesn't move, but it has holes on each side that are milled in there. So as this is on there and you hold it in place, your axles will be even on the car on both sides. So they'll be drilled in perfectly even and perfectly straight. And then you can move them and set your axles whatever distance that you want on the car. So you can see on this one, we put the, the wheels as far forward as we could get them. And the wheels farthest to the back weight mostly right in front of that that back axle. Other things that we use is a hub sander. So this is just a little handhold tool where you take the wheels before you put them on and you slide it onto this hub sander and as you spin it it smooths the inside of the hub right here because as you see you have to space your wheels out right so when these wheels 
on this car go down the track, they move in and out. So if there's any burrs or any rough edges on the inside of that hub, it's going to slow your car down. So what this does, again, you stick <coughs> this inside that hub, and you just a couple slight turns, and then that sandpaper will will sand it down. And then on the same thing on the outside of the hub here, you stick it in, and give it a couple good twists, and it smooths out the outer hub where it makes contact. So you can see that there's space, how much free play, and that's about how much free play you want uh, on your wheels and on your axles. So that's the second essential tool that we use. And then this one, um, you can buy in a wheel kit. So this is a great little tool. So what you do is you chuck this up in your drill. Just like that. And then you unscrew this end, just uses a flathead, stick your wheel on there, tighten it down, and what it does is it holds that wheel in place. So what you can do from that point is, is you spin this drill at whatever speed you want, it's going to spin that wheel. And then you take a piece of fine grit sandpaper and you just hold it. And what you want to end up doing is you can really see on this wheel right here, the camera will autofocus. You see how it's got the little nubs on the outer edge of the wheel, and how that wheel is nice and smooth. Some of these wheels I went a little bit aggressive on, and those nubs are rounded off. So there's two thoughts, two theories to to what, how, and why you do this. One is to make the the wheel surface smooth because sometimes the casting process will leave burrs and seams on the wheel and that's going to create friction or bumps and it's going to slow your car down as it goes down the track. So you want to remove all of those imperfections. The second thought process is that as you can see the inside of the wheel right here, if my camera girl would stop twitching and moving and scratching and being fidgety, um, Quiet. you can actually remove the surface of the wheel. The less mass on your wheel that it has to spin, the faster it will go because it has less resistance. So you can either remove material from the inside of the wheel or you can remove it from the outside of the wheel. So what we try and do is take a little bit off the outside of the wheel. Um, but some, some leagues, some rules that if these nubs right here on the outside of the tread are missing, it'll disqualify your car from competing. So what people do is they'll remove mass from the inside of the wheel because it doesn't take away any of these nubs on the outer part of the wheels. So that's that's really about the basics. I know it's about 13 minutes of, of video time but that's that's really how uh, me and Dylan throughout our years of Pinewood Derby and now getting Lily into into scouting. And like I said last year hers was open division. Pika. Girls other siblings and adults were able to, to enter, so she made her car and did really well. But now that she is an official Cub Scout, she will be officially entering her first race this coming up next year. And she'll be using all the, the tips, tricks, and technology that we just explained to hopefully uh, get a car as fast or faster than what her brother was able to make. And hopefully we can get some cool trophies and medals up on her shelf. So um, that's really about it for the, the Pinewood Derby. Thanks for tuning in, and if you got any questions, leave them in the comment box below. Thanks.